speaks in part to what we've been doing here while there are problems. The American economy, I think, is the best performing economy in the developed world right now of any size. And you have been helping that. And the, the, the attacks on what the Fed has been doing to try and keep you from continuing to encourage the right kinds of things in Europe are about as disastrous a, uh, a prescription for American policy. And I, I, I hope you will continue to ignore them. Dr. Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bernanke, if you don't mind, would you tell me whether or not you do your own shopping at the grocery store? Yes, I do. Okay, so you're aware of the prices. But, you know, this argument that prices are going up about 2%, nobody believes it. You know, and the old CPI says prices are going up at 9%. So they believe this. And people on fixed incomes, they're really hurting. The middle class is really hurting because their inflation rate is very much higher than the government tries to tell them. And that's why they lose trust in government. But, you know, this whole idea about prices and debasement of currency, if, I, if uh, you loan me $100 and in two years from now I get you 90 back you'd be pretty upset but we pan back that money back that's worth 10 or 15 or 20 20 percent less and, and and nobody seems to be able to do anything about it but it's very upsetting but it's theft if I don't give you your ten, your full hundred dollars back if you loan me a hundred dollars somebody I'm stealing ten dollars from you so somebody's stealing wealth and this is very upsetting but you know um, Last In January, at one of your press conferences, you said that uh, you sort of poked a little bit of fun at people uh, to downplay the 2% inflation rate. But if you say it's 2 and I say it's 9, it's compromised for the sake of argument that it's 5%. That uh, you said that if, if it doesn't hurt you unless you're one of those people who stick their money in, in the mattress. But, uh, but where are you going to put it? Are you going to put it in a CD and not make any money at all? So this, this, doesn't, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't encourage the savings, and it just uh, discourages people. But it well, Joanne and Diana, the little girl was taken from her classroom here at Marcus Garvey Academy. She says with no notice and no warning, she was taken into the nurse's office and given those four shots. I'm her mother. That's my call. That's not their call. Sigal Kinney is fuming after her 14-year-old daughter was given four shots by the school nurse at Marcus Garvey Academy without parental permission. They were the uh, hepatitis A, the menococcal for the uh, meningitis, and uh, uh, HPV, and uh, uh, seasonal influenza for flu. I never give her a flu shot. At the request of Sigal's eighth grade daughter, we're not showing her face or using her name. The 14-year-old daughter says she was called out of class by the school nurse back on January 30th and sent to the school's clinic, which is operated by St. John's Medical. She comes home, hand me the envelope with, this, with the shot uh, record in it that they had given her in school. And when I looked at it, I said, what is this? And she was like, they gave me shots and they took blood and took a urine. And the Why would they give you HPV? I never wanted you to have HPV. And as far as you getting injections, you have your own private physician. I don't need them to do that in school for you. Siglewood. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, February 29th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. Also, YouTube. Darko 2012 is my YouTube channel. Also, a backup channel, uh, please subscribe to is Darko 2013. All the links, most of the links, will be posted in YouTube's video description unless I mess up or there's a technological glitch like I had yesterday where I lose all the links and articles. So try to check them out. 20 economic statistics to use to wake up sheeple from their entertainment induced comas. And we'll go through these, not all of them, but the United States has more government debt per capita than Greece, Portugal, Italy, Ireland, or Spain. And it goes on and says there are clear signs that the economic activity is also significantly slowing down in the United States. For example, new orders for goods manufactured in the U.S. experienced the biggest drops in three years in January. U.S. consumers are buying, are busy racking up staggering amounts of debt. Once again, total consumer debt rose at an annual rate of 9.3% in December. And uh, moving on here, U.S. Postal Service has, has announced plans to eliminate 35,000 more jobs. There are more unemployed Americans than there are people living in the entire nation of Greece. And number seven, the percentage of American men that have jobs is near an all-time record low. And that's doing um, just um, 
uh, horrible uh, psychological social damage on our society uh, when the man can't provide for his family, right? But then again, you have the eugenicists and the social engineers, the economic, uh, the people who are carrying out this economic warfare with the hidden inflation, like you saw Ron Paul pointing out, uh, that what? That women have to get out of the house and then they have to uh, be able to pitch in, right? They shouldn't have to do that, but they do it. And they're told that, oh, you're free. You're equal to your counterpart. You're just like a man. You have a penis. You are a man. You know, it's just like, no, you're not. <laughs> So you can uh, go ahead and do whatever you want to do. You're free to do that. But uh, you shouldn't have to do it because, you know, you need to feed your family. And then, of course, what is this? Ha what happens? Well, when the man can't provide, he's laid off, can't find a job. Well, then he's a piece of low-down, dirty piece of crap. And so he gets booted out of the house. Divorce happens. Makes things worse. And uh, then what happens? Well, the child goes with the mother usually who can statistically uh, is not going to be able to support that family. The average duration of unemployment in the United States is nearly three times as long as it was back in the year uh, 2000 and 2009. There were 2.6 million long-term unemployed workers, according to the federal government. Today, there are 5.6 million. Wow. Finishing up, uh, the number of Americans on food stamps has increased by almost 50% since Barack Obama first took office. Not blaming him. That's just what the author included right now. 48% of all Americans are considered to be either low income or living in poverty. So I'm going to move on here because uh, I have a lot of news to get to. More bad news. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but U.S. water bills to triple, not again, like gas, not based off any demand or supply issues. They're just going to jack that shit up. Irish EU treaty vote threatens chaos. So Ireland shocked Europe with plans for a referendum on the EU's fiscal treaty, a move that risks an unprecedented fragmentation of the Eurozone and a major clash with Germany. It gives the Irish people... I guess that's what we call them. We're just sheeple slaves anyways. But the opportunity to reaffirm Ireland's commitment to membership, to the membership of the euro, he told and says here, all three major parties back the treaty, but analysts say there's a high risk of rejection by angry voters in the current uh, fractitious mood. And this is what it's all about. EU intrusive, that's what it gives them. EU intrusive powers to police their budgets of debtor states. Been denounced as feudal bondage, which is exactly what it is. Moving on here, we have third of UK postcodes have slow broadband, broadband speeds. So a third of homes in the UK have broadband speeds well below the national average. Again, this, is, this isn't based off any supply or demand issues. I've had personal experience with this ever since I've had internet. Um... FCC finds many broadband providers give less than claim. That's right. So the first nationwide st uh, study tests the performance of broadband internet providers is showing many companies do not provide speedy customers the speeds customers are paying for. Now, I went through this just personally uh, uh, where the last place I lived with Comcast. Now I have a um, kind of a smaller provider, telecom company. When I first moved here, I was paying for what? For 12, I thought it was 14 megabytes, but for whatever it's worth, 12 megabytes that's what they said and uh you know it, 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 it slowed down it slowed down to about five megabytes after about a month and then this past month it was get down to a half a megabyte i shit you not a half a megabyte when i was testing it and uh i i, I emailed them and and before they even responded back to me it had shot up to 12 megabytes before they even recommended me to clear cookies check for viruses all that bs right so i know that they're doing it but they'll try to get you to pay for a ha for a more expensive service. And don't fall for that. Give them, give them hell. Argentina calls on firms to halt imports of U.K. products. So they're going to protest U.K. products over the Falklands trying to grab their oil. U.K. sad and frustrated with Argentine decision to turn away cruise vessels sailing from Falklands. So they're turning away their vessels as well. Should Central America legalize drugs? Well, I think so, right? Because you always hear about all these casualties, all these people killed in the war on drugs, the war on drugs. It's not the drugs that are killing people, like the guns. The guns don't walk, get up and walk out of a holster and start killing people. No, it's the person. It's not the drugs that are necessarily uh, causing all this indirect violence and, and, and killing and beheadings down there. No, it's the war on drugs. But the U.S. tells South America to shut up about legalizing drugs. That's because the banks and the bankers... And the powers that be, they run the drug trade, right? And they run the bank, the banking scam. So, uh, you know, they don't want that to go away. Reuters Secretary of Homeland Security defended Washington's drug war strategy on Monday, despite calls for some Latin Americans to consider decriminalizing narcotics. 
She goes on and says, I would not agree with the premise that the drug war is a failure. It is a continuing effort to keep our people from becoming addicted to dangerous drugs. Hmm, pharmaceutical drugs? I'm not even going to go. All right, moving on to some more environmental eugenics type stuff. Japanese government softened tsunami warning eight days before one hit Fukushima. That's right. Perhaps a nuclear power company, TEPCO, government officials in Japan softened language relating to the threat of the earthquake produced by the tsunami only eight days before last year's disaster. Then BP back on the news to discussing a $14 billion, I call it a shakedown is what it is. They call it a settlement. Um, it'll never be what they actually should pay, but either way. And remember, this was all due to negligence. They could have prevented this. They were warned about a seal, but they didn't do anything about it. And the guy that, you know, the head foreman, you know, to help bring it up. What he got, he ended up diving into while well, he was on almost set on fire, dove into a pool of oil in the ocean off the rig, uh, hundreds of feet, right? So that's what you get. Uh, BP contracts with Defense Department surged since oil spills, so they got a monopoly on defense contracts for oil. Makes sense. British Petroleum, Royal Dutch Shell calls for carbon price action ahead of key EU vote. Basically, going on and saying that. They need to take something like well, 1 billion or so allowances out of the ETS or emissions trading system. I'm talking about the carbon scam, another scam uh, that uh, Shell's executive vice president said. This is as key European Parliament committee prepares to vote on a set aside of EU allowances and a bid to raise the carbon price, the price of carbon, which has nothing to do with the temperature, right? The temperature actually drives carbon, but it doesn't matter. It, do, it doesn't matter whether that's real or true or, or fact. We're in la-la land now, guys. No justice. Judge dismisses organic farmers case against Monsanto. New York federal court today dismissed a lawsuit against the agribusiness giant Monsanto brought by thousands of certified organic farmers. Moving on here. Stomach viruses case increasing. So these stories are probably making you sick. It seems though everyone you know has been sick or has a child vomiting diarrhea because it increased the number of acute gastrointestinal night is outbreaks in the region in the past several weeks this is in virginia the number of outbreaks is 20 percent higher than last year so cannibals on menu for mps odd day a parliamentary inquiry into schools ethics classes took a bizarre turn yesterday as touchy topics such as having sex with animals euthanizing the disabled children and cannibalism were discussed and then we have after birth abortion why should a baby live journal of medical ethics this is an actual study it shows that both fetuses and newborns do not have the same moral status as an actual person. Two, the fact that both are potential persons is morally irrelevant. The authors argue that we, what we call after-birth abortion, i.e. killing a newborn, should be permissible in all the cases where abortion is, including cases where the newborn is not disabled, if it serves the best interests of the the concerned adults, i.e. eugenicists. I'm going to speed it up here. Vaccination rights attorney Patricia Finn threatened with criminal charges. New York State demands she surrender names of all of her clients. Kind of a sad story here. Mainstream column admits vaccines cause cancer in pets, and I stopped that a couple years ago. The pet go sued for accidentally chopping off a puppy's ear and gluing it back on so that they wouldn't get caught, but they did. U.S. seeks new review of easier to spread bird flu, easier to spread. I don't worry, it isn't as risky as people fear. Why anti-authoritarian are diagnosed as mentally ill. This is a psychologist. He talks with hundreds of people and he says he's struck by how many of those diagnosed are essentially anti-authoritarians and how, the, how many of those professionals who have diagnosed them are not. People with this, quote, disorder question whether an authority is a legitimate one before taking that authority seriously. It says some activists lament or lament how few anti-authoritarians there appear to be in the U.S. One reason could be that many natural anti-authoritarians are now basically diagnosed with some kind of psychological disorder and medicated before they achieve political consciousness of society's most oppressive authorities. In summary, it basically says that most of these psychologists, psychiatrists diagnosing these people with this disorder are what? They themselves, they jump through all these hoops to get to where they're going. In other words, they bow down to authority. World cooling has set in, warns astrophysicists, while BBC and global warming apologists challenge to end the cover-up, making the claim that current slight dimming of the sun was not going to reverse the rise in global temperature. Basically, official data shows the world passed its peak temperatures 10 years ago. But facts and reality doesn't matter, guys. You just have to believe in it. Believe. I have to believe in global warming. U.S. belief in warming rises with the thermometer as the spraying of aerosols increases, which is causing the global dimming. 
which is actually causing the warming. Common sense is not required. This is GGN. I'm Darko. God bless.